Today I read an interesting article on Vice. It's not where I would expect to read interesting or intriguing things. Uh, but I found this one guy there who actually, he does this crazy thing, which is where he speaks to people and then he reports what it is that he hears and then he tries to learn about something. It's almost as if he's reporting news, like a, like a journalist. It's just, you know, I turn on the TV or I read a newspaper nowadays, it's very little of that seems to happen. And we probably don't agree on everything, but he actually does a really good job of this thing where he just reports news. So I'd highly suggest that you check his work out. This is an interesting article where they said, Apple is telling lawmakers people will hurt themselves if they try to fix iPhones. So one of the things that Jessa Jones and I were doing, in two, whether it was 2015 lobbying in New York, 2017 in Nebraska, or the later 2017 in Tennessee, is we, we were going door to door, we were explaining our case and what it's like, and I also brought boards with me, that, and I showed how they worked, and I brought the board with a fan and a charger, and I showed the people that I was speaking to, the, the assembly people and the senators, fan spin, and the joy of fan spin. And we showed them how it is we worked on the devices, what it is we altered to make something work, so that we can give them a better idea of what's going on. And apparently Apple appears to uh, be copying that. Nice try, lobbyist. Perhaps we should trademark or copyright this lobbying style that Jessa and I have, because Apple appears to be copying it. And it only seems to be fair. I mean, they don't want other people to have rectangular phones. Why should they be allowed to copy the way we lobby? But I digress. So in this article, you'll see that they were going uh, to lawmakers and they were actually bringing iPhones to meetings. So the same way that Jessa and I were showing people, here's motherboards, here's how you replace a camera or a screen or a, or a battery. They were going from place to place and saying that you could hurt yourself by puncturing a lithium ion battery. And there's an interesting, another interesting article on this that has some quotes from Lisa Jackson, which is Apple's vice president of policy and social initiatives. That's one of those things like the vi vice president of social initiatives and policy. You know, it just, it sounds like minister, vice president of minister of truth or something like that. It's just, it's, it's scary. And it's interesting to read this quote. I want, I want to tell you what it is I find interesting about this, because it's not just the repair part of it that I find interesting. So it says, I don't think you can say repairability equals longevity. I often say if you're in the repair business, repair seems like the answer, but you actually need to design for the life cycle and Apple has designed for some time around durability, around the idea we can release the latest and greatest product, your old product works and still has value. Our first thought is you don't need to repair this. When you do, we want the repair to be fairly priced and accessible to you. To think about these very complex products and say the answer to all our problems is that you should just have anybody repair and access parts is not looking at the whole problem. And I think I can agree with her when she says that repair is not the entire story of the longevity of a product. One good example is when it comes to operating system updates. Apple is very good when it comes to operating system updates on the iPhone. Android, uh, not so much. There, are, there is more to a product than simply fixing it when it comes to longevity. However, when you make products that virtually every single year have some sort of stupid design defect. To say that repairability is not longevity when you are so aware of how easily your products fail that you are, whoops, we made the cable too short, let's fix that in the next year kind of thing, or uh, it is, it's a big part of it. A big part of it is repairability. Being able to replace a battery in your device does have something to do with its longevity, particularly when you decide that you're going to glue the battery into the case and uh, not sell it to anybody. Uh, you know, being able to get access to purchasing a cable or a screen or an IC chip when you make devices that die really easily does have something to do with longevity. And when I read quotes like this, when I read something that says, I don't think you can say repairability equals longevity when you need to fix something when it breaks in order for it to last for a long time, I think it is triggering something that is very commonly triggered, particularly in today's political climate. Whether I'm speaking to somebody who's very liberal, who's tired of corporations kind of pushing people in who are, who are desperate and broke into a corner and then setting up the rules for them and saying, take it or leave it, or whether I'm speaking to a conservative who is sick and tired of people in government saying, you know, what people are allowed to say, what people are allowed to do, what, uh, how much of your money we're allowed to take, how we're going to distribute whatever what you earn, or uh, people who are tired of individuals who say, you're not allowed to say this, or you can't say that, that's uh, not politically correct, or what this and that and the other. What I'm hearing from uh, both sides of the political aisle is that one thing that they can agree on is they are sick and tired of so-called elites telling them how they should act 
or what they should do, particularly when it is that they're acting in a very hypocritical manner where they're not living it themselves. You know, when I hear a celebrity talk about how important climate change is, when they also brag about how they enjoy flying their own planes just for fun, or when I'm listening to somebody from a really large corporation tell me how much they care about the environment and social initiatives while they will do everything in their power to ensure that when I try to fix a device, I am not able to. So when somebody says that you don't think repairability equals longevity, and they say that with a straight face, that it's one of these, the, the Apple occupies one of those middle grounds because they are a large company that is pushing you as, uh, people into a corner and then just giving them the middle finger. But simultaneously, they also use the government in not just our country, but several different countries to make repair more difficult. Whether it's in this country, where if I try to import batteries, joink, or whether it's in countries in Europe, where they are trying to redefine refurbishing as counterfeiting to say that if you fix something that has our logo on it, we can now say that it is counterfeit because you're trying to sell it as something with our logo on it. It's not simply that we're changing the brake pads on a Ford uh, Focus and saying that it's still a Ford Focus. No, when I changed the brake pads on that Ford Focus, I counterfeited it. I didn't refurbish it. It's one of these really interesting areas where whether you are a conservative, a liberal, or a libertarian, regardless of which side of the spectrum you're on, there is a reason for you to give a large middle finger to the people at Apple for this type of hypocritical double talk. To say with a straight face that repairability does not equal longevity, when you have a 10 to 12 year history of making devices at top tier prices that are less durable than a $300 Lenovo or a $150 Motorola phone that will often not last as long as the $150 Motorola phone to the $300 Lenovo is pathetic. To say that you design devices for durability when in 2004, Lenovo and IBM were making devices you could spill a gallon of water into while running Prime 95, whereas a MacBook, if your hands are a little bit, you know, you still got a little bit of liquid on it from washing your hands, the entire board gets corroded, your power button doesn't work, and you're done. Seems like they are just, just gaslighting you. You know, repair does not equal longevity. Now, I can understand the argument that if your job is repair, you're going to think that all problems need to be solved by repair. If you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Now, I will agree that there is more to longevity of a device than simply being more able to fix it at a third party. Things like software updates, where I admitted that Apple is actually doing a pretty good job in contrast to some of their competitors. But there are genuine issues when something is broken and the manufacturer won't fix it that have to do with longevity. And there are two ways that I can imagine solving that, even though I only have this puny, tiny little repairman brain. The first way that I can imagine solving a problem with a device that has a physical or hardware or electrical defect is through repair. Soldering irons, hot air stations, multimeters, uh, screwdrivers. And the second way that I can imagine solving it is by designing the device for longevity, meaning not designing it with terrible design flaws that make the $3,000 device work like more of a piece of shit than a $300 Lenovo. And we're talking about Apple. That's not going to happen in my lifetime. They're not going to stop designing trash. They still to this day are designing trash. We're talking about a company that has their head so far up their ass that they thought it was a good idea to have burning hot air exhaust at a machine right at the point where a hinge uh, in a screen and a backplate was glued together. So they decided we're gonna hold these two heavy parts of the machine together with glue rather than making it one piece of aluminum. And then they decided just for lulls, we're gonna have all the burning hot air in this tiny little case exhaust right into that section. We're talking about a company where when they had more money in their bank account than virtually any company on planet Earth in all of the world's history, that they thought it was a good idea to put a 52 volt power line right next to a one to three volt data line that goes straight to the CPU. They're not going to stop designing products like trash. I cannot control them developing products like trash. I've tried, we've made many videos on this before. They are going to likely continue hiring first year interns to do all of their design work so that Tim Cook can have a bigger mansion. And that's cool, I understand that. All I'm saying is that once it gets to our part of the chain, how about we make it a little bit easier rather than say things like, repair really does have, have anything to do with longevity when we create products that fail real easily. That's nothing! 
you don't really need a repair. When we focus here on lines like, our first thought is, you don't need to repair this. Of course you think that. Why would I get my oil changed when I could simply buy a new car? Why would I wash my clothes when I can simply buy new Levi's every week? They say this with a straight face. Straight face. Vice president. Trillion dollar publicly traded company. No, nothing wrong with this. And when they will actually go door to door and say, you can't replace a battery in a device because you may puncture that device, because you may hurt yourself while working on the battery. This is the type of thing that, uh, that, that just... Should we? How dumb can you be and still get a battery out of a phone. So let's, let's see how much Lewis is going to hurt himself. Now, I'm not going to use any of the tools that are typically sold when you purchase uh, batteries and things like that, because many do-it-yourself kits will include little pieces that are designed to not puncture and, and work with it. I'm just, I'm, let's just assume that I'm just going to go to my garage and I'm going to fix my phone. Let's pretend that you're one of the stubborn my family that just sees the VCR clock brinking and they just decide to just bash the, the remote on the VCR until it works. So we're just going to get this battery out of here. Uh, this, is, this is an authorized Rossman repair tool, by the way. So we are going to... Yeah, this is a parts phone. I don't got to care how mean I am to it. And let's see what happens here. So I'm not wearing gloves. I'm pretty sure I'll be... My hands will just be just fine. And... Yeah, let's, let's get this battery out of here, so... <sighs> yeah, we're gonna bend that battery a little bit more than I, I wanted to, but, uh... Come on. Dangerous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fuck it. Pinched. Whatever this thing is. Yeah. Get the fuck out of there. This is, yeah, this is really dangerous. This is a regular... What's up, Lisa Jackson? Yep, way too dangerous. I don't know how anybody that's following instructions is gonna do this without just effing killing themselves now, aren't they? Vice President of Social Policy, Environmentalism, Apple fucking Inc., you stupid bitch! Are you fucking kidding me? Too fucking dangerous! You used to at least come up with, let's say, level 6 or level 8 bullshit. You're not even bringing the level 2 bullshit anymore. Just be honest. You want more money. You want people to just buy a new one. Just buy a new one. I'm sorry you appear to be experiencing a problem. A small percentage of our customers experience. Just buy a new one. This is the best you can come up with. Vice president of a damn near trillion dollar company. I came up with better shit than this to explain why I didn't do my current events homework in third grade. <laughs> I don't think you can say repairability equals longevity. I don't think you can say that replacing a battery in your own device equals longevity. I don't think giving access to programming for an SMC or new SMC chips, when we design a laptop, that when somebody replaces the battery, we have the 12 volt data line right next to the 3 volt battery line. So it goes zit will increase longevity. When we design a device where the SMC chip that's responsible for detecting a battery cannot be read by anybody so that if there's a problem with it, that it can be replaced with another one, we are going to design a chip that acts like a terrorist in fucking 24, that Jack Bauer's trying to figure out where the bomb is from, where the guy will actually kill himself by swallowing poison before Jack Bauer is able to figure out where the bomb is. We're gonna develop a chip that fucking poisons itself if Lewis tries to get the programming on it and actually erases itself out of spite 
just so the user's machine won't be able to see a fucking battery without giving us $750. L let's say toning it down just a little bit on that so the chip doesn't damn self-destruct its programming is not going to increase longevity. You pile of fuck faces to know how it is you're designing the product, to know how it is you are designing the chip to kill itself. If an independent technician attempts to read the programming and apply it to a new chip, so maybe, just maybe, little Timmy's MacBook will be able to see the fucking battery. The nerve, the audacity, the balls it takes to say that with a straight face to a bunch of lawmakers and then wonder why people are mad at you. I don't think making much chips available. When we have gone so far in finding the cheapest labor to use as engineers that we have put a 52 volt backlight line right next to a 1.7 volt data line that goes straight to the fucking Muxin CPU. I don't think that it would increase longevity to sell that chip so that, that when that little arc occurs or when that little 52 volt just goes Bleh! and overclocks your CPU even worse than anything that Linus has tried to do before because 52 volts for your CPU, that's something that you only get in the A1706 and A1708 MacBook Pro. Don't delay, buy today on apple.com. I don't think that that's gonna increase longevity. And you wonder why I read this stuff and become mad. Fuck you, Apple. Fuck you. Have you ever thought that, man, I really wish I had overstock inventory from 2011 that Lewis wasn't able to finish selling for an obsolete 2006 MacBook Pro that likely has a dead XT6 1600 GPU? Well, don't delay. Buy today. Today is your lucky day, where not only can you buy that obsolete screen, but they will be autographed. Fuck Apple. And they will have lyrics written on them from Tool's message to Harry Manback, such as, you know you're going to have another accident. Or, fuck Apple. Fuck you. Die. Bastard. You think you're so cool, hmm? Asshole. These screens have properly programmed EDID codes, so they will work in any A1150 or A1211 MacBook Pro. Also, these are new AU Optronics B154 PW01 V0 screens that have the EDID code programmed properly so that you won't have to reprogram the EDID code or install funky software to have brightness control within your operating system the same way you would with a Chunghua compatible replacement. And they won't have that little funky inverter board thing you have to remove in the bottom like you did with the CLA 154 WP05. And you can get them today on store.rossmangroup.com. Don't delay. Check out our screens on store.rossmangroup.com today.